In this video, we continue with congruency of triangles. Example 1. Prove triangle ABC and triangle DBC congruent. Remember that we have four options of minimum requirements to be met for triangles to be congruent. And we need to find these requirements in our sketch. In our sketch, they indicated that side AC and side DC are equal. So we have a pair of sides. We also have that angle B1 and angle B2 are both 90 degrees and thus equal. So this can either be a pair of angles or a pair of right angles. Lastly, you have to realize that side CB in the middle of the big triangle forms part of the triangle on the left as well as the triangle on the right. And even though it's not a pair of sides, it is a side that is in both triangles. Because our first pair of sides are also the hypotenuse of these two triangles, we're going to make use of our fourth option of right angle, hypotenuse and side. So now we need to go and write this down properly. So I'm going to start off mentioning in which two triangles we are working. And this was also given in the question. Now we're going to write down the three requirements. Firstly, we know that side AC is equal to side DC. And this was given to us. Then we said that angle B1 is the same size as angle B2, which is 90 degrees, and this was also given to us. And finally, we worked with side BC, which is a side in both these triangles, so it has to be equal, and for this we say that we have a common side. And now that I have all three requirements, I can make the conclusion that triangle ABC on the left will be congruent to the triangle on the right. Angle A in the left triangle goes with angle D in the right, B fits with B, and lastly C goes with C. And here my reason will be I used the hypotenuse, right angle, and another side. You can see that I gave the reason in the order that I wrote them down. It is a different order than the original one, but it is still the same three requirements, so it's still perfectly acceptable. Example 2. In this sketch, EF is parallel to GH. So now you need to immediately remember that you might be able to use alternate corresponding or co-interior angles. Then we are also given that ED is the same length as DH. The first question to prove triangle DEF congruent to triangle DHG. So we need to identify our minimum requirements. We've already mentioned that ED is the same length as DH which means we have a pair of sides. Next up, you will need to make use of previous geometry knowledge. You need to see that you can make use of alternate angles to say that angle F is the same size as angle G, and now we also have a pair of angles. For the third requirement, you now have more than one option. You can either use alternate angles again to say that angle E is the same size as angle H, and then we have another pair of angles. Or you can have vertically opposite angles and say that angle D1 is the same as angle D2 for another pair of angles. Now we can go and write down all our measurements that are equal. In triangle DEF and triangle DHG, we know that ED is the same length as DH, and that was given to us. For the first pair of angles, I'm going to choose to use angle F, and that is equal to angle G, 
because of alternate angles with our parallel lines EF being parallel to GH. For the final pair of angles, I'm going to say angle D1 is equal to angle D2. And the geometry reason for that, they are vertically opposite angles. And now we can make the conclusion that triangle DEF is congruent. And here, angle D goes with angle D. Angle E will be equal to angle H. And finally, angle F is equal to angle G. And my reason here will be a side and two angles. Question B. Prove that EH bisects GF. This means we need to prove that when I draw line EH where it intersects GF, it divides GF into two equal parts. And we actually already know that. In A, we've just proven that these two triangles are congruent. Congruency means that all the corresponding sides and angles are the same. Therefore, we can say that side GD of triangle GDH is the same length as side DF of triangle DEF. The reason for this is our congruent triangles. And because we now know that these two parts of line GF are equal, we can say that line EH bisects line GF.